everyone it's Karen here welcome back to my channel I'm excited to do a new art journaling page today and I want to work in my 8x10 disc bound joggles art journal this is the tab journal and it has a lot of tabs and I've already worked in it before and what I did with it is that I added li like small little tabs and different tabs inside so it would be really cool to just create something with it but today i actually want to work with the big one the big tabs they're eight by ten they're big pages only because i really want to uh, use something different and the stencils that i'm using today are bigger so this is why i love the art journal page from joggles the disc bound journals are so easy to use and you can basically take them out and put them back in and I can work with these two pages and then put them back into the journal and then I can work on a flat surface. So I'm going to be pulling these out of here and then putting the journal aside so I can work with it. I'm really excited to work with a new company that has stencils. It's called Stencil Girl and they have amazing stencils. Really, really amazing. And I just realized I want to work with the smooth surface of this. So I'm going to add the two smooth surfaces to the to the background. Now I want to use the whole panel for the art journal just because my stencils are large enough for that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create lots of different patterns in the background. And that I'm going to do using stencils. So I grab a few stencils from Stencil Girl and I'm going to create different markings on this. So there's lots of different really cool things that you can do with these. I just grabbed a couple of them and I'm going to create things with them. So I grab a few acrylic paints. These are the fluorescent paints from Pabio and I also added I add, and I also got the Dyna ones which are kind of iridescent. There is two iridescent colors which are the blue and the green and then I have the fluorescent colors which is the orange the pink and the yellow and i'm going to basically mix mix these together i'm going to start first with the uh, three fluorescent ones just because they're kind of in the same family i don't want to mix too many things together and then create just patterns i have some sponges that i did as that i grabbed as well and what i'm going to do is i'm basically going to put the paint i think on this side Okay, so let's put a little bit of paint here. These are high viscosity paints, so they're very thick. And I really like because they're pretty shiny and fluorescent. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to start with one stencil at a time just because otherwise it makes a big mess. I always like starting with the lighter colors and just kind of covering the background. So I'm mixing now the two colors together and just applying them with, with a little sponge. Even if it runs underneath the stencil, that's okay because I don't really mind it's just part of the pattern for the work that I'm going to be doing that works out well add a little bit of paint of pink paint and let's go back to the yellow Even if it mixes a little bit, that's okay. Let's do the other side as well. Look how pretty that looks. Wow, that's stunning. Okay, let's put it on the other side now. And I can, what's nice about it is I can move this page aside and do the same thing on this one. And it doesn't have to be exactly like the other one. I'm just kind of painting it now that I'm more secure about how to do it I just go and do it easily on there we go now I'm going to take this off and there is the pattern for this one as well 
I'm going to heat set this so I can add the next stencil. For the second stencil, I'm going to use the green and the blue. And the reason why I didn't want to use them in the first one is because they're from the opposite colors of the color wheel. And I wanted to make sure that I don't get any mud or any brown in it. So I'm going to add a different pattern with the blue and the green. These are iridescent colors, so they look colors, so they look beautiful. So I'm going to use different patterns from here just to kind of add to the background. Now, I want to be specific about what I'm doing now because the real stencil that I want to use and what I want it, my focal point to be are these fish. It's hard to see these fish here, but I'm going to be adding them to the background. So I kind of want to know where I'm going to be adding them because the rest is going to be covered. So I wanted to add this little fish over here and this big one is going to go backwards over here. So I'm kind of covering these sides and then the top one here, this one, is going to be swimming in the opposite direction. Like look at this fish. He has so much character. It's hard to see, but there we go. Look at his face. So I really want it kind of over here. So that's why I kind of want to put the centered stuff here. So let's start with that. Let's start with this side first, because I just don't know sometimes where the pattern is going to go. And some of it of green. And I'm pounding it just because I want a little bit more color on it than before. Oh, how cool is that? I'm going to add a little bit more pattern maybe I will add it like this way for this it's cool to use like different stencils to do that I really love this page now even without the fish I just like it because you're we're gonna get like things in different directions which looks really cool so it's just adding pattern to the background as much as you can doesn't have to be in any exact shape or form but you just want to make sure that you cover enough so that when you're adding the other patterns it will look really cool underneath the fish will look really cool so I added a bunch of pattern here and I'm going to just add a little bit of it here as well even though this might not be seen but it will still look really cool that way Okay, so more or less the pattern is here. I don't really need to cover everything. The other thing I can do is to add markings. So for example, I have this marker over here. So I could like add lines. You can do just hearts, basically anything goes. And you can use different colors. So I have like yellow. But the patterns really, the main patterns are from, from the stencils because they create really nice patterns. So it's really nice to see. And I have these Sharpies here. And um, you can also like write something if you want to. You can basically do anything you want, right? Like that's, that's the nice thing about like our journaling. Like you can do anything you want with it. But the main thing I want to do is basically add the fish, which is my main idea that I had for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically find a nice space where the fish can go and look really, really nice. To do the fish, I'm going to use this impasto paint. It's the black impasto paint. It's pitch black. And I'm going to use it the same way I did before, just being careful to get it inside the lines. And in this case, I do want the exact pattern, so I want to be careful, which sometimes it's hard when you're stenciling, especially if you can't see the actual stenciled area well, because there's a lot of pattern in the background. And you want to make sure you don't add too much ink or paint, because it could really affect the way it looks. It can run underneath. Hopefully in this case I did it well. And if not, I could always use a marker to kind of 
paint the edges but let's see let's take this out and there you go there's one fish and you can see all the patterns underneath so it looks really cool like a tropical fish I'm gonna do this one now and this one is gonna go kind of here and then I'm gonna wash the stencil so I can turn it around because I do want the other fish to go in a different direction I mean I did mess up a little bit and that's okay that's part of doing artwork nothing is perfect especially in art journaling and I'm okay with that it's still it's my artwork it's my journal so I don't mind if it looks a little bit imperfect that's why I want to it's my biggest message that I have for people that you really need to just stop worrying about imperfections there you go the second time around much better I made some mistakes here and that's okay now I just realized I made that fish too low I wonder if the other one will fit here it should fit underneath yeah I made the other one this other fish too low but let me go wash the stencil so then I can turn it around okay so yes I did realize that I made this fish too low so when I put this other fish here it kind of overlaps but you know what it is what it is if you are going to redo this yourself so just put the fish a little bit higher it's not a big deal I mean I make mistakes all the time when I make my art and that's okay with me don't stress about mistakes that's always what I say it's just part of the experience and also you know what you end up um, learning about composition about where things go it is part of the experience and it's okay to do that and I'm happy with usually I just add things to it I could add little bubbles so that would work as well so I could like always add things to kind of balance the composition so I'm not worried I'm just going to finish stenciling this fish and then I'm going to dry everything This background as it is looks really really busy so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to cover everything around it to kind of create a focal point with the fish so I'm taking a black gelato and what I want to do is kind of go around it and I'm going to basically use my finger to kind of blend it now I'm going to use I'm going to do one page at a time just because it's really difficult to focal focus everything on it I might have to use a little bit of water to just blend this nicely I'm just going to be dipping my finger in the water and there we go you can also use a paintbrush you don't have to use your finger per se but I just want to want to go around it a little bit I might use a paintbrush just to kind of get in this small areas where I, my finger doesn't fit actually I even can use this much probably much easier to use a paintbrush and I could use also use paint the reason why I want to use gelatos is because they really um, blend nicely but they also are a little bit translucent so you can create a really cool effect with it so as you can see I'm basically covering everything else and it's kind of silly because there is a nice pattern on the background that's why I'm thinking that I'm all just blend it a little bit it looks really nice the pattern looks really nice in the background so I just don't want to fully cover everything but I just don't know if it will take away from the fish so it needs to kind of balance that as well I'm not sure I like it too much I think I wonder if the, it will be better with like black paint I'm going to add some black paint to it and see if it makes a difference even if it's just to blend the area around the fish yeah I think that might work so sometimes you want to do something you expect it to do that and then it doesn't do what you expect it to so you kind of find another product that can work with it so that looks good all right perfect 
So that's what I'm trying to do. So I think what I needed to do is really define the edges of the fish to go around and then it can blend out into the background but the edges of the fish have to be really defined so I'm using the black paint for that just to kind of outline the fish so this is how I'm working with this one and you can see a little bit of the pattern here I'm just going to kind of blend this in a little bit because it looks it looks really weird otherwise. I'm taking some of the paint away. That looks really nice. Okay, so I'm not sure. Sometimes I'm experimenting with things. So I'm experimenting with this. I'm removing some of the black and just kind of pulling it out. That looks really nice. But I'm keeping the one that are that is kind of outlining the fish. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So you don't to have to see the repeat of this, but you understand the concept of how I did it. Yeah, that looks like really nice. So I just have the outline of the fish. Okay. There we go. So that's basically, I really like that actually. It turned very cool. I didn't even expect it to turn out this way. But what it did is that the black went in between the patterns and I was able to clean above the paint. So it looks really, really neat. Okay, so let's do the other fish as well. Okay, obviously this is not finished and I want to take a little bit of white paint to add some really nice uh, texture as well so I'm going to add this white paint here it's another heavy body paint and I want to add kind of a border here on this side oops I'm gonna have to move this this is why I like using two okay there we go so I'm going to add a border here. I think adding a little bit of white also adds a little bit of light to the background. So I really like adding white as well. So it's good to add black and then complement with white. So there we go. That really helps. So I'm just going to add some bubbles on top here. These kind of look like bubbles to me. So I wanted to kind of add them at the top to make it look like there's bubbles coming out of the, the mouth of the fish. Let's see, let's do these ones. But I think I should add a few more kind of bubbly circles in different places. So it kind of looks like the fish is in the ocean. Let's add a few more here. And some more at the top here. And obviously if you make a mistake you can always remove it while the paint is still wet so if I added paint where I didn't want it I can remove that do you want to add a few more bubbles here when I'm gonna go the opposite way I really like that okay so let me just finish up this side and just up, add a couple more bubbles here so there we go that looks like the fish is kind of swimming in the ocean and what I'm going to do is I am going to add a little bit more white and I'm going to add some splatters so I need to dilute this white a little bit and then 
and just add the splatters. I'm trying to kind of stay around the fish just so it really looks like the fish is part of the water. So there we go, that's the one side. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. But I'm going to add the border at the top. So again, the same thing. This border will go at the top here. And I'm going to just create this here at the top. And then add the bubbles afterwards. There we go. And then just add the bubbles everywhere. So first coming out of the fish's mouth. The only thing is I haven't left any space for the sentiment, which I really wanted to use. So we'll see what we're going to do with that. bubbles on this side and just a few bubbles here in this in the middle and just add a little bit of water again to do the splatters What the splatters help is kind of blend the black area. It helps to blend everything. So it doesn't look like it's all one big black blob. Now I'm bringing both of them back. And it really looks like the fish are swimming. I am thinking to maybe still add the sentiment. I really like the sentiment for him. Let's see. Go. He says, keep on swimming or go your own way. I think we could do the keep on swimming. If we did it in a color that would strike here. So let's see. Maybe this color. Let's try. on swimming it doesn't really you can't really tell but it is part of it and I'm thinking what I'll do also is add a few splatters of this one as well so let's make it more watery I think it will look nice to just add a few pink splatters as well So my art journal is not perfect by any means, but I love it, and that's the important thing. I can always add some more markings as I really want, like I can I kind of go with this. I like, you could add like other markings as well to kind of make it so that it looks cool. There we go. Let's do the same thing on the other side. You can also add some yellow. These markers can be also done. It can be added to add the color to this. And it's hard to tell the color in here. Okay, I just lower down the, the brightness so you can really see. And now I'm just doodling. I'm going to go over it with a marker so you can maybe, I can see the writing better.
Now all I have to do is just pop it back into my art journal. And look how easy it is to just create a really nice fish themed journal. Just want to just adding a few more markings. I just think it's missing a little bit of pink. So these markers help to kind of add a little bit and it will make it stand out even more. So you can help yourself with acrylic markers as well. Uh, as I was looking at this, it looked like it needed a little bit more lines and it really makes it stand out. So maybe I should just like kind of highlight this a little bit. But as I was looking at it, it looked like the black was kind of getting lost. That really helps. The pink really helps at the end. So I'm happy to do this and just kind of go over the lines. You can also, I guess, do this with a black marker, but I really like the way it's coming out with the pink. It looks really cool like that. This is just a basically a basic Sharpie marker, acrylic marker. And you can really see the fish now kind of There we go. So that's my art journal. I hope you liked my process. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. For more inspiration, subscribe to my channel and visit me on my website. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye.